if you were to point out, you know, people that have have done exactly that, second pick in the draft, I imagine that's probably one of the best feelings in the in the world, right? I can I can only imagine you, your family, everyone involved, amazing. And a level of being overwhelmed and yeah. over indexed from that yeah. kind of ultimate outcome that occurred, by the way. What do you mean by that? Like, too, well, too happy? Like, Well, not too happy. I mean, it's this moment where you are thrusted, and when I say over-indexed, with yeah. decisions, not really having the finance background or yep. business background to make these decisions. And a lot of people that have came into your life have came into your life for the purpose of making money. Mm -hmm. So recognizing that, but then the trust level, I mean, you talk about this and how you're scaling your business right now. Like there's, when your partner is your wife, there's a level of trust there mm -hmm. on what are production costs? Um, how are we keeping overhead down? Everyone like, has the same incentives. Exactly, yeah. how, like how are we increasing the margins? And for mm -hmm. us, thinking you know how to answer that while still learning the business, but trusting people to run the business for you is a, a really hard position to be in, especially when there's millions of dollars on the line. So things had changed for me. The relationships had changed for me. When I'm shaking David Stern's hand, being the second pick in the draft, I'm like, wow, that equates to $14.6 million over three years. That gets inflated by 11%. You start recognizing all these. And I look at my mom and my dad, I'm like, okay, they are now employees of my LLC. Should they be employees of my yeah. LLC? How much should I pay them? Oh, I get gift tax over anything that's $10,000 or more. What's the right way to funnel money towards them? Should I create a, a business where I make an investment? What is that investment I want to make and what business? Who am I trusting to run accounting on all that business? How much trust should I give my parents? Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's a million things. Oh, yeah, and you get conflated yeah. with also like who you love and who's been around longest with Am I conflating that with who's mo the most competent to run my business? Yeah. And I see that now with kids. I go, my, my dad's been around for my whole life. He's helped me make sound decisions. Okay, does that mean your dad is competent enough to be your agent? Yeah. Like, we need to be able to decipher between all these worlds that we live in. And I, It feels like that almost, like, hasn't changed, right? From when you were doing it to now. Those, they still struggle with a lot of those issues, right? It's, it, I mean, maybe you have better people in place and there's better infrastructure, but at the end of the day, uh, you still have to hire an agent. You still have to figure out what your parents are, if they're going to be involved or not be involved. What is the solution to that, right? Like, it doesn't feel like there's a great one. Well, I mean, I think in a way I try to provide that yeah. for young people because mm -hmm. I think there's a lot of ways you can go about doing things now. If you have your ducks in a row, yeah. you can, I mean, it's almost like what we've done with the honest to a degree, right? Mm -hmm. It's like, let's look at something. So you get an endorsement deal. If you're the second pick or first pick in the draft, you can probably demand this right now where there's so many um, extra dollars on the table that you have no idea of the world that even exists that comes along with it. So you have one, two, three, three cameras here, right? Mm -hmm. So the way I look at it from the production side is I say, okay, let's say Chevrolet comes to me and they, they wanna pay me a million dollars a year to be the face of Chevrolet. Mm -hmm. So I'm getting my MBA contract, that's 4% that I might owe my agent, but I'm gonna negotiate my agent down because if I'm gonna be the first pick in the draft, that's fixed, Yeah. right? That's fixed. Mm -hmm. So maybe I can get you for 1% just to manage my relationship with my team and be that buffer. I don't really need to pay you 4%, mm -hmm. okay? Marketing wise, if I work with a content house and Chevrolet wants to pay me $1 million, my agent will then get 20% of that. But here's a way I've learned how to pay myself. So if I have my own production company, right, for being that top tier person for Chevrolet, hey, wait, I can pay my production company and say, hey, agent, you're going to only get 10%. That other 10% is going to come back through my company. Mm -hmm. And in a way, let me outsource all production and say to Chevrolet, hey, by the way, your creative agency or the that third party that you outsource to production wise. We don't need them. Why do we need them? Yeah. They're not going to be able to tell you what is truly authentic to me. Mm -hmm. My team will be able to tell you that. So if I'm spending time with you and I say, okay, you like, when you, every time you drive your car, you like to eat Oreos, <laughs> or you like to go through, you like to listen to country music. Yeah. Okay, great. Like now I can build the right creative for Chevrolet to best showcase you in that Chevrolet spot. And yeah. by the way, are we doing a linear spot? Or are we doing a digital spot? Right, so then so think about how now all of a sudden you're in business with the athlete. And by the way, how you outsource that from a production perspective, instead of them using a third party, you say, no, we can utilize that. We can shoot it properly. And now all of a sudden if you work out that deal, now you're creating enterprise with something that actually has a P&L and you can increase 
you know, your overall business strategy because now you're eating from multiple streams of income. If you look at uh, the, the, the most, what people would consider the financially successful athletes in the world today, mm -hmm. right? There's a few different ways to do it in my opinion. You can get paid a shit ton of money through your contract, which is yep. how, how a lot of people do it. Uh, and then you look at guys like a LeBron, a, a Kevin Durant, right? People like that and, and there's others in other sports. But they built these, to your point, platforms or enterprises where there's four or five different things going on. They all leverage each other. They do. And, Ecosystem. And, and in a lot of times, they uh, what they're doing is they're building enterprise value. And they're doing it so they can sell that for a multiple that they wouldn't be able to get elsewhere, right? LeBron can go and do commercials, but there's only so many commercials he can do, there's only so much a brand's gonna pay him, and that's physical time out of his hands. Uh -huh. It's much easier to go hire someone to run a production house or a studio or an investment firm or a, a tequila company or whatever it is, right? Have them be the CEO, put some money into it, whatever, or raise money, whatever it is, get a multiple of that, and use your power and influence and connections to scale that. And I think uh, that's changed over time, right? Like Even if you look at Michael Jordan, when he first started, sure, the Nike deal everyone knows about, but he was doing the same commercials with Gatorade, with Hanes, with you know the same stuff. And I think over time, that's that's more people are becoming accustomed to that. But you have to really want to be an entrepreneur. You can't just say, I'm going to go hoop and that's it. Or you have to have someone that's willing to do it, right? Agreed. Yeah. But the, the, the reality is that I learned quickly that as an athlete or a TV personality, this whole world of six degrees of separation is thrown out the window. Yeah, It's one degree of separation. Mm -hmm. Every entrepreneur, Every investment banker, every politician I've met wanted to be an athlete in some form or fashion, and every athlete wants to be some kind of entertainer, oh, politician, the CEO. 100%. So who is bridging that gap? And the more you can get the athlete into, okay, like, let's realistically look at it. If you're making $35, $40 million a year, what is it to you? If you're Joe Burrow, you're about to sign a contract mm -hmm. for $50 million a year. What is it to you to take two of the best seats in the house that the team is willing to give you and start reaching out to different executives in different fields that you're interested in to come to games, to meet post game for a drink afterwards to sit down with you and your team to say, here are a couple of ideas we sketch for you. What is your interest? What do you think about this business model? Where should we go? Yeah. I mean, it just creates an ecosystem that is hard to turn down opportunity. And it's all about access, man. At the end of the day, most people don't have access to the type of deals that athletes have access to. Yeah. You got to take advantage of it. Yeah, I completely agree. Access is like the number one word I would imagine, right? Where, where and then execution. Execution, obviously. yeah, for sure. Uh, I just, I, I feel like I see a lot of athletes not taking advantage of that sometimes, right? And I think that's probably frustrating to a degree to people who don't have the access, who have great ideas, or trying to raise money, or trying to do these things. But it is the world we live in.